Everyone desires a good life for sure. We all strive for happiness and comfort. However, as pessimistic as it may sound, life may not be as good as you want most of the time, and it might really be harsh on you sometimes. Life is hard. You often hear this everywhere. But is there a way to make life peaceful and comfortable? Can we possibly attain calmness during tough times? Most of us humans are emotionally driven, although there's nothing wrong about it to some extent. But if you want a peaceful and happy life, you must think logically. Eudaimonia, a Greek word for happiness, is the goal of Stoicism. Stoicism is a philosophy of personal ethics informed by its system of logic and its views on the natural world. It requires us to focus on what really matters and what's in our control to treat others fairly and justly and let go of the negative emotions so we can live with tranquility, morality, and happiness even in a difficult situation. But how can we do all of it? Here's how. Obtaining the ability to stay calm even in front of overwhelming emotional disturbances seems hard. As a social species, we tend to get emotionally influenced efficiently by anything. But according to Stoicism's teaching, the path to happiness is to live in accordance with nature that you just have to accept the occurrence of everything because the world is so unpredictable. It means you shouldn't get emotionally attached to disturbances because you can't control the circumstances in the first place. You have no control over the events that might happen. You have no control over the weather. You have no control over what someone does to you and how people treat you. You have no control over the society. You have no control over death. You have no control over whatever the world presents to you. The only thing you have control over is you, how you respond to the situation, how you view the things around you, how you think. Don't get distracted by the externals. That's out of your control. What's the point of worrying too much or getting anxious and angry complaining and complaining about something that happens inevitably? Does it solve or change predicaments? Or does it bring you stress, headache, and wrinkles on your face? And worst, mental health problems such as anxiety disorder and depression. There were many Stoic philosophers in the past. But the three most famous Stoics, where we cultivated most of Stoicism's teachings and principles, are from Marcus Aurelius, the last of the five good Roman emperors, who ruled the Roman Empire for 19 years. Seneca, the advisor to Emperor Nero, and Epictetus, who was born a slave. All Stoic philosophers don't care about wealth, fame, power, or status. For them, in order to be happy, virtue is enough. They trained their mind not to become a slave of emotion, pleasure, or desire. They act rationally. Seneca was one of the richest people in the Roman Empire, but he lived a simple life. He wrote in his book, Letters from a Stoic, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence on the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient, so he that is so wants nothing. The greatest blessings of mankind are within us and within our reach. A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. Humans are best at seeking happiness through possessions, although it can make us happy, but temporary happiness, a temporary fix for the issue of the need to feel happy. We also commonly like quite a lot and are hard to satisfy, so the pursuit of happiness is never ending. If you really want genuine happiness, you should lower your desire. The hunger for more will make you less, and satisfaction for less will make you more. There is much more that life has to offer than just possessions. People desire more to feel good about themselves, and also perhaps because of social status. Most of us are acquiring great possessions because we're afraid to be perceived as unsuccessful by the society who values success more than anything. And with the presence of social media, it's so easy to brag everything up. Seeing someone living a good life will give you a feeling of envy, jealousy, or even stress. It can also cause you to feel that there's something wrong with you, and perhaps thinking that you're a complete failure. It naturally reminds you of what you lack, whether it's money, lifestyle, 
appearance, relationships, or whatever it may be. Not surprisingly, it is one of the paths to unhappiness, the comparison. We all have the tendency to compare our behind the scenes to someone else's highlight reel because of our ego. Ego made us think we are superior to others or inferior to someone else. And because we're living in a competitive world, it might be the reason why you're unhappy and working towards social status. You keep climbing and climbing because you think happiness is at the peak. And when you reach the top, you'll begin to realize that you missed all the most important things along the way. If you are so busy and so focused looking in this direction, probably you'll eventually lose sight of these other directions. We should think of what's really valuable in life and what's not until we have begun to go without them. We fail to realize how unnecessary many things are. We've been using them not because we needed them, but because we had them, Seneca wrote. Our civilization is fixating on a sense of lack in our heads. Consequently, we work harder to buy the things we actually don't need and constantly feel unsatisfied. We're going to be happy if we buy this. You'll be having a much better life if you had this. Everyone would definitely love you if you become this. That's what society is showing us. Marcus Aurelius, the emperor, who has access to all wealth, pleasure, and desire, yet he resists everything. He wrote in his book, Meditations, almost nothing material is needed for a happy life for he who has understood existence. People are so occupied with what society has required for happiness, material possessions, constant pleasure, and wealth. If these are the real recipe for happiness, then the people who don't have access to this will never be happy. Whoever you are, problems and pain will never leave you. I think if there's one thing that bothers me quite frequently, it is the people. People I'm surrounded by and encountered every day. But I guess this all stems from expectations and ignorance, ignorance about human nature. The more you understand and accept the nature of humankind, our natural ways of thinking and behavioral traits, the less you'll get affected by the disturbances they bring. And it is true for everything. Ignorance of specific subjects can create mistakes and misunderstandings. Coupled with expectations and it will take emotions further, simply because emotions will get a lot heavier if the experiences don't reach the idea you planted in your mind. So, for the Stoics, rather than expecting good, we should expect the worst. We should have negative visualization. Visualize yourself in any bothering and stressful situation a situation you usually get distracted, and a situation you are afraid of. And doing so, because you already expected it, helps us feel a lesser emotional impact when it actually happens. This is a powerful technique to get you mentally prepared because even if you do everything to prevent bad things from happening, it really does happen. Marcus Aurelius wrote, when you wake up in the morning, tell yourself, the people I deal with today will be the meddling, ungrateful, arrogant, dishonest, jealous and surly. They are like this because they can't tell good from evil. But I have seen the beauty of good and the ugliness of evil, and have recognized that the wrongdoer has a nature related to my own, not of the same blood and birth, but the same mind and possessing a share of the divine. And so none of them can hurt me. We live in an imperfect world with imperfect people. Just manage your internal world and don't have unrealistic expectations about the external world. Realize that things aren't always working according to plan. Accept what life will throw at you, peacefully, rather than struggling. Stop making things complicated and don't get bothered by the nonsense. This philosophy made a big impact in drastic changes in today's world. Perhaps it's the most impressive and valuable contribution of ancient Greek and Roman philosophy to humanity, in my opinion. Stoicism is an effective treatment for one of the biggest and expanding global problems we are facing today, the mental health disorders. The psychological treatment called cognitive behavioral therapy is an effective and widely used therapy for treating mental health problems such as anxiety disorder, depression, 
obsessive compulsive disorder, and any severe mental illness. A psychological treatment that is heavily inspired by the philosophy of Stoicism. Invented by the American psychologist named Albert Ellis, and particularly inspired by what Epictetus said, that men are disturbed not by things, but the views which they take of them. It is really our perception of things that makes us ill. You can't always choose what will be going to happen, but you can always choose the judgment which you give to every situation. So based on all of Stoicism's principles, and similarly for cognitive behavioral therapy, it is clear the problem is not in the outside events, it's in the inside events. It's in your head, in your beliefs, in you. Therefore, the solution is, of course, in you. However, we all know it's not quite simple. Anxiety disorder, depression, or any mental problems are made by long-term exposure to chronic stress, and reversing that is also a long-term approach. Sometimes we can start fixing ourselves, but after a few days or weeks, unintentionally neglected. And of course, no noticeable changes. It is due to the habit we formed. Our body and subconscious mind hold and retain all the thinking patterns, the behaviors, the perceptions, beliefs, emotional reaction, and even the pain. So to make a difference, you need to form new habits by applying stoicism in your own life. And most importantly, consistency. You must embody it and make it ingrained into your brain. It will take a while. As Epictetus said, no great thing is created suddenly any more than a bunch of grapes or a fig. If you tell me that you desire a fig, I answer that there must be time. Let it first blossom, then bear fruit, then ripen.